This week, someone flew a drone into a tornado, a Florida man used his drone for good and not evil, and we've got some news about the weather. My name's Finn, this week has been a bit of a thunderstorm in the world of drones, so let's dive right in. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to fly a drone into a tornado? Well, no one's really done it up until now. Members of the Otis Project recently managed to fly a drone directly into a tornado, and they were able to capture some pretty cool footage. It's honestly kind of crazy that they were able to pull this off without even crashing the drone. The pilot, Lewis Tucker, a seasoned drone pilot, used a custom drone that was able to intercept the tornado mid-flight as he was controlling the drone from two miles away. While he was flying, the pilot was able to get weather data like temperature, relative humidity, and pressure. These types of data give us a better understanding of how the tornado formed and actually where it could be going. Tucker is part of the Otis Project, a team of meteorologists and engineers dedicated to understanding tornado dynamics with the goal of protecting lives and infrastructure. The team sees a strong potential with the technology, and Tucker emphasizes how drones offer a much safer alternative compared to traditional methods. These methods would normally force researchers to get dangerously close to storms in order to collect data. If you're wondering, they did get FAA approval for this operation. It took them about a year to get this uh, approval, which makes sense given how complicated the operation was. Do you smell that, Cam? What? Something's cooking and it smells like burnt plastic. A drone pilot who was flying near the Ivanpah solar plant in the Mojave Desert recently got his aircraft melted, and that's not good. Like, at all. The photo shows what appears to be a Mavic 3 clearly damaged by the heat. This solar plant uses more than 300,000 mirrors to reflect the sun into a single point, and this solar power plant covers 1,416 hectares of land. The amount of heat reflected by a plant like this is enough to make birds spontaneously combust, so it's going to have no problem in melting your drone. Plants like these are designed to produce clean, renewable energy by using thousands of mirrors to focus sunlight onto towers that generate steam and drive turbines. Its purpose is to reduce the reliance on fossil fuels and significantly cut carbon emissions while supplying electricity to tens of thousands of homes. The user also shared a pretty cool photo that he took while he was in the air. It gives us kind of a futuristic space-like vibe with the mountains in the background. Has anyone seen Dune recently? It's always important to be mindful of your drone's heat tolerance, especially when flying in extreme environments like this. As summer approaches, DJI is offering some great deals on drones, making this the perfect time to upgrade if you are in the market for a new aircraft. We've talked about the rumored Mini 5 on this channel, but don't forget the Mini 4 is still an excellent aircraft, especially if you pick it up on sale. I mean, Mini 3 is an excellent aircraft if you can still get it on sale. The Mini 4K, which is a different drone, is also available at up to 15% off. And you can grab the Action 4 Pro at 28% off, just in case you wanted to record some behind the scenes footage of your flights. The Mavic 3 Pro has had a price drop down to 2,519 US dollars, which is a pretty good deal. Remember, just because the Mavic 4 came out doesn't mean that you have to buy it. This sale ends on May 31st, so you have a bit of time to make up your mind, but most of these items will probably be on sale intermittently throughout the year as DJI needs to clear out some of their old stock. If you've been following science news, you might have noticed the recent spike in solar flares, which could affect your drone flights. Recently, NASA issued a warning regarding solar flares and their effects. These types of solar flares can cause interference with various different types of radio systems. The first flare hit on May 13th and was rated at an X 1.2, with X being the most intense class of solar flare. Then came an even stronger one on the 14th, clocking in at X 2.7. So. Why does this matter for drone pilots? Well, solar flares can disrupt GPS signals, radio communications, and onboard sensors like magnetometers, which are essential for navigation, stability, especially for high altitude or beyond visual line of sight operations. These disturbances can lead to navigation errors, loss of control, or flight instability, making it important to check space weather forecasts before flying and use backup systems when possible. Now more than ever, it's crucial to have solid emergency procedures and checklists in place. If a flyaway or lost link occurs, a pilot needs to know exactly how to understand to keep the situation under control and prevent anything serious from happening. If you're interested in solar flares and their effects on drones, we've got a whole podcast that dives into everything you need to know regarding the KP index and how you can stay prepared. Today's episode is brought to you by Coastal Drone Co. Hey, that's us, your trusted resource for drone training and certification in Canada and the USA. If you're gonna pick up a new drone, you'll probably need a license to go with it. After all, you don't wanna be caught flying without a certificate. We've trained tens of thousands of pilots all across North America to get either a basic pilot certificate, advanced pilot certificate, or an FAA part 107. Soon we'll even be rolling out a level one complex pilots certificate program. We offer online or in-person training so you can feel confident throughout your journey as a drone pilot, whether you're doing it for fun or for work. Wherever and however you're flying, our courses will guide you through everything you need to know. So check out the links below or visit us at coastaldrone.co to take your drone flying to the next level. The phrase Florida man has earned internet recognition around the world, but this time it's for a good reason. 
Andrew Smith, a shark fisher from Pensacola, Florida, used his drone to save a teenage girl who was caught in a riptide from drowning by using it to deliver a flotation device last Thursday. His initial rescue attempt failed as strong winds caused him to drop the flotation device too soon. However, on the second try, Smith was able to successfully deliver the device to the girl who managed to hold on until first responders arrived. Local authorities credited Smith's quick thinking, noting the girl likely wouldn't have survived without him. A bystander captured a video of the rescue calling it extraordinary and praising him as a true hero. Smith typically uses a drone for shark fishing because he can't safely deploy bait using a kayak due to a health condition. He also noted the importance of beach safety, urging people to respect warning flags, indicating dangerous water conditions. The girl's father was emotional and thanked Smith, referring to him as a guardian angel. We at Coastal are happy to hear that everyone is safe and sound. Just when you thought we were done with the Mavic 4 Pro, unfortunately we've got more to share. And this time it's about the rumored electronic ND filters that were supposed to be delayed. Earlier this week, a video surfaced showing a user who got early access to the filter. They took it for a test flight to see how it holds up. Based on what we've seen in the video, the software doesn't seem fully ready. It throws error messages on screen when the filter is attached, likely due to compatibility issues with the new Infinity Gimbal. Our guess, the added weight and rotational dynamics of the filter are throwing off the gimbal's balance. Throughout the video, there are noticeable twitches, which strongly suggests a calibration or stabilization issue. While it's possible that DJI genuinely slipped up and the ND filter was released early by mistake, we bet that the launch timeline wasn't exactly airtight and this accidental leak might just be a clever move to keep the hype alive but we'll keep you posted as things progress. Researchers at the Cooperative Institute for Severe and High Impact Weather Research and Operations in Oklahoma have developed a drone specifically designed to improve the accuracy of weather forecasting. The drone, named the Copter Sond 3D, was created by a team led by scientist Tony Siegels and Tyler Bell. The scientists gathered detailed atmospheric data similar to weather towers while they were airborne. Development of the aircraft began in 2016, incorporating input from meteorologists and other researchers. Since then, it has undergone multiple iterations each one refined to better address the evolving challenges posed by weather conditions. The drone is made from 3D printed materials, but may face durability challenges in harsh weather conditions like wind or snow. Intermet Systems, a private company, has licensed the drone's design and aims to refine it further, making it lighter and more robust for commercial deployment. The researchers are now working with the National Severe Storms Lab on a new forecasting system designed to extend warning lead times from approximately 20 minutes to up to two hours. This may even save lives during severe storms, tornadoes, and floods. Traditional weather balloons, which are limited to two measurements a day, could be supplemented or replaced by these drones for continuous data collection. The drone is not yet commercially available, and the researchers are working to make it fully autonomous, including automatic charging stations to minimize human risk during operations. We're curious to see how this technology evolves and we'll keep you updated on the latest developments. If you're curious, we've got a few different podcasts all relating to flying your drone in various weather conditions. Check them out if you're interested in all weather flying. Last Sunday, the Canadian Tulip Festival in Ottawa hosted a unique combined drone and fireworks display as it celebrates the 80th anniversary of the liberation of the Netherlands. The show included a synchronized performance of 200 drones and fireworks, blending modern technology with a traditional celebration. It also emphasized the importance of being eco-friendly as drones are quieter than regular fireworks and less polluting and dogs don't freak out. From the sounds of it, it sounds like all spectators thoroughly enjoyed the show. If you're interested, we have an entire podcast episode where we go behind the scenes with Dan and Travis from Pixel Sky Animations, diving deep into everything about drone light shows. That's it for this week. Stay tuned for a podcast this Sunday where we interview Gab707, a professional FPV pilot who's flown all over the world, capturing some of the most beautiful shots you could ever imagine. In the meantime, check out last week's video where we show you how to unlock your DJI drone so you can fly pretty much anywhere. As always, like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.